friends, welcome back. This lesson is titled, Balancing Love with Wisdom. For those of you that have gone through the first course of enlightenment, uh, might remember that at the end of that course, there's a lesson titled, Balancing Wisdom with Love. That is because the self-realization approach, which is the enlightenment courses and the infinity course, is more prone or susceptible in a way to being taken a little bit into the extreme of wisdom. It's kind of like the yogic approach that you see um, of yogis just retreating from life, sitting in caves, just seeing from a place of wisdom, so to speak. Of course, this is generalizing. Um, so the path of self-realization is more prone to the path of wisdom, whereas the path of self-empowerment and self-actualization is more prone usually to the extreme of love. And then you might wonder, well, can one have too much love or can one even have too much wisdom? And it's not a matter of having too much love. It's a matter of not having that love be balanced by wisdom or not having that wisdom be balanced with also a healthy amount or dose of love infused in that perspective. In a way, the higher the balance, the higher both the amount or the degree of love that can be experienced and understood and given, as well as the degree and the precision of the wisdom that can be provided. So basically, in order to gain more wisdom, you also need to become more balanced in love. And in order to gain more love, you need to also balance your love and your passion for love with your passion for wisdom or with an inclusion of wisdom. So both cannot really grow without becoming more balanced. So by definition, in order to increase your love, it is about the balance of love and wisdom that you wish to increase, not so much, not so much the love side of this sort of equation. And I'll give some more practical explanations in a little bit. So since this is self-actualization, people are sometimes prone to being a little too much lost in the idea of I am a person inside of a world. That's why the enlightenment side is also highly recommended because it leads you through the depth of consciousness, retracing back to creation process from the I am the person to the I am, to the I awareness, to even beyond the I altogether. And so this will gradually empty you out of believing that you are a separate individual inside of an external real world. So what that does, the self-realization side, is it allows you to see from the vantage point of wisdom. It allows you to see and discern the truth. However, the truth can become, in a sense, an obstacle to your energy pattern as an individuation if it does not also accept that the illusion is here for a purpose. If all you do is see through the illusion, you might not actually act on the inspirations that you entered this illusion for to begin with. That's one example of wisdom being out of balance and there not being enough love or acceptance or appreciation for the fact that the illusion is relatively real even though it's not. But acting as if it is real, knowing that the experience that one extracts and contributes to the illusion of physical reality, that experience itself is valuable and real. And that's exactly why illusion is not irrelevant. So oftentimes, traditional teachings make the mistake of stating that because it's all an illusion, that also means it's all irrelevant. Just because there is no personal identity, that means that you shouldn't be happy or you shouldn't be really excited about anything or you shouldn't really have desires or you shouldn't really have a momentum towards any particular direction because it's all false. Again, that's a classic example of too much wisdom that cannot become wiser without first including more love. But on the other hand, if you have too much love, you might run into the example of, for example, a lot of fourth density wanderers that come into this plane that really are heavily love and service to others oriented. They will become so service to others oriented, they will become so loving that they become martyrs of themselves. And they will actually miss some crucial understandings that would otherwise have allowed them to be of much more much radiant, more radiant and much more balanced and much more prolonged service here in their lifespan. So in order to be of service to others even more, sometimes we need to take a step back from our excessive need and impulse and desire to be of service to others. 
A classic example of this would be um, activism, for example. In most cases, activism is driven by, not always, sometimes it's for very selfish reasons, but usually activism is driven, like a classic activist is someone, in my opinion, okay, this is generalization, obviously, would be someone, but the classic example would be someone that wants to give so badly to the world, that wants to fix these problems, that it forgets to see that these problems are created, first of all, by the energy state of the human collective consciousness. And so it starts out of love, it starts fighting against what it sees to the point of burnout. Maybe they start joining Greenpeace and they start fighting whale, uh, whale um, hunting ships or whatever it is. And they become so driven in that direction but they never really take a step back to realize more of themselves. They never really take a step back to realize that, hey, maybe everyone has their own free will. And maybe the highest value of this life is to explore free will in all of the ways that we can. Maybe the highest value is not necessarily to always not kill or to always not do this or to always not do that or to always not have unfairness. Perhaps a healthy dose of unfairness and conflict and challenge is actually the catalyst that all of these different, yet one, consciousnesses come together for in this illusory play to learn from in an accelerated fashion. And maybe that by taking away all the problems for other people or by wanting to do so, you're actually going against the flow of this collective's desire to learn certain lessons that can only be learned with a certain degree of conflict or opposition or challenge or struggle. And to understand, wisdom would see and understand that every single individual has their own higher mind and higher self that is perfectly taking care of them. And that even their lower selves, if they're not aware of that, that they might be a little bit off track or off course or misguided, but that that still is in a distorted form, the one infinite creator's free will. It is still a free agent of the infinite. And so it does need to, in a sense, be at least understood and appreciated and respected before any action is taken, quote unquote, against that or to correct an imbalance in the world. So an activist would, or many activists can be too much into the love aspect of wanting to be of service and wanting to fix things and wanting this to be a better world and wanting this to be fair for everybody to where they actually forget to see or use the vantage point of wisdom. So since the self-actualization and self-empowerment side can be in some ways more prone to the overcompensation uh, of love at the expense of wisdom. This lesson is titled Balancing Love with Wisdom. Now the main point that I want people to realize is what I kind of already addressed in my example just now. And that is that the best way in my experience or the most generally applicable and efficient way to balance an um, excessive need for wanting to love and care and make sure everyone is okay is to take a step back, take a deep breath, perhaps apply one of the relaxation and awakening and awareness tools that you've learned in the enlightenment courses. Either way, whatever you do to basically calm yourself and detach a little bit from that overly excessive momentum in the direction of what you would call love, but it's actually misguided love because it's lacking wisdom. And you're about to burn yourself out perhaps, or you're finding that you're creating so much struggle and so much opposition from your outside world, even though all you're trying to do is help. That's the perfect time to take a step back and understand that you might not see everything clearly, that you might not be as right and righteous as you believe you are by wanting to be of service to others. Maybe in order to be of service to others more fully and more holistically and more truly, you need to gain some awareness first. You need to gain some more wisdom first before you can proceed being more efficient in your service to others. So for example, then you take a deep breath, you relax, you take one step back, maybe two steps back, maybe completely stop being of service to others in the way that you're used to in that moment and realize that your meditation right now is actually indirectly, but very powerfully being of greater service to others because you are now, before you're continuing to apply all your power into trying to fix something out there or trying to take care of other people, you're actually having the intention to first align yourself more clearly, more holistically, in a more balanced way with yourself, your higher self, and other beings' higher selves.
And from that vantage point of peace and ease and expansion and detachment, you can now start including the perception. And again, this is the one I was trying to get to. This is the most generally applicable tool to help you ease off of the high horse of being of service to others excessively and allows you to balance it more with wisdom. And that's the perception or understanding or idea or reality or truth that everybody else has their own higher mind, their own non-physical mind, and they have their own higher self that are taking care of them. They are very much aware of what's going on in that person's life and they don't need your lower mind to choose for them what is best and what is fair and what needs to be fixed. That is sort of the instant wisdom um, injection that you can give yourself at that those points where your service for love becomes a little bit too blind to see the fuller picture of what's happening, a little too enthusiastic perhaps. So now you can devote yourself, use that power of devotion and don't kill your power of devotion. Don't stop that momentum, but redirect it a little bit by including injecting yourself with more wisdom. And now you're also devoted, but you're more internally devoted. Maybe it's time to take a break from excessive external action and maybe, and to feel responsible for the world. And maybe it's time to actually expand into yourself and realize how everything is actually already perfect. So here's another tool or injection you can use, a wisdom injection, so to speak, a shot of wisdom. And that is to come to the realization that every appearance essentially is illusory and it's chosen by the, by the participating consciousnesses to be created and co-created and they are co-agreeing to experience that illusion in that particular way, to use the universal energy and parallel realities and configurations of atoms and molecules and quantum particles and whatever, and, and coalesce this or manifest this in such an illusory way that it seems really real for them in that particular way. And that's the only way for them to learn a lesson. But if you can see beyond the service and notice that even if you're highly uncomfortable with the situation they may have created for themselves, that it's not your business to interfere with what their free will is choosing to accomplish. And so beyond the service, you will see that everything is already perfect. Even when on the service, something really unfair might be unfolding. I'm not saying not to take action when something unfair seems to be going on. Check in with yourself, be really intuitive about it, and in general, take action when injustice seems to happen. But when immediate physical injustice does not seem to happen, um, see beyond the service and first, and first of all, realize that everything is essentially perfect as it is and that there is higher selves with every being that are in full support of those beings. So see that everyone has their own higher self taking care of them and that you do not always know better or rarely ever know better what's best for someone else's journey than their higher self has already determined and has chosen by choosing that experience. So use the example of injustice, for example, as a reflection as to what does this mean about me? How does this trigger my own lack beliefs and definitions? And how can I expand in a more holistic wisdom oriented view while still being of service to others and still being inspired to pay attention and be of service wherever I can. And the other tool would be to naturally rest this awareness and notice that everything is a timelessly perfect appearance of consciousness. It's already perfect. It's already rested in timeless perfection. It's already being of service to the one exactly as it is. Even if you personally with your conscious physical mind may not like what you're seeing because you've learned to define it in a very negative way and therefore you're triggered, you need to have the wisdom. If you wish to be truly of service to others, you need to have the wisdom to also be able to discern when you are personally triggered and you're pasting your ideas and ideals onto someone else's choice for life and journey because then you're actually being more detrimental than beneficial. And someone that truly wants to be of service rather than be selfish will need to sometimes take the blow of feeling really discomfortable with what someone else is choosing for themselves. Let's say a parent is very uncomfortable about their children smoking weed, for example. That parent needs to take ownership and understand that whatever is triggering them in that moment, and I'm not endorsing the use of weed, I'm just saying as an example, what the parent needs to do whenever they get triggered is to understand that they are coming from their personal trigger first and foremost. And when they realize that they can, they can then 
make the most adjustable um, balanced decision in that scenario. But we need to understand that if we want to be of service and not just be selfish, we need to really clear out our own negative definitions about things, feel truly in alignment and notice the perfection of everything. Notice everyone else is having a higher self. Listen, pay attention to what their higher selves are asking of the lower selves. And then wherever appropriate or asked for, you will give your two cents. You will demonstrate first and foremost by example, what it is that you feel is in highest alignment that would balance out that situation. But you're not going to just interfere with other people's life choices, even if you are uncomfortable with a definition you have learned to paste onto that experience. And go back to the emotional guidance system. If I am uncomfortable with what I see out there, it's not because I'm uncomfortable with what I see out there, it's because my higher self disagrees with what I'm thinking about what I'm seeing right there. So if I am triggered into action and I believe I'm trying to be of service to others, I need to first sort of sift through the whole emotional reaction and investigate why I feel triggered by that event to begin with. And occasionally it's just because quick action is required and this unjust situation did indeed require you to interfere and take action and balance out the situation and look at it all later. Sometimes that is absolutely valid and relevant. But in most scenarios for most people, generally speaking, especially in the West, these scenarios are not, I do not advise to react to scenarios in that way because they are imbalanced. They are not actually helping. They are usually more detrimental than beneficial, more disrupting and confusing than clarifying. So be really clear within yourself first. Why did I get triggered? Because I've learned to define this in a negative way. Higher self disagrees, therefore I feel bad. It's not their fault. They are choosing something that's relevant for them on some level. Whether to take action or not is up to your highest intuition, but you cannot tap into your highest intuition until you've cleared out your personal biases. Otherwise you're just reacting to the circumstances and often fueling the fire and making it worse. So we have to balance our love with wisdom and sometimes take a step back, take a step into detachment, emotional detachment and observe and use the emotional guidance system. I feel bad because I define this in a way that my higher self disagrees with. Now, if I take action based on my trigger, I'm actually contradicting my own higher self. I'm not trusting what my higher self is communicating to me. First, I need to feel holistic and good and balanced and clear about what is occurring. And only then can I take action in a way that will benefit and truly balance out the circumstances. So in general, balancing love with wisdom is all about realizing that in order to be more of service, we have to step up our own game, investigate ourselves and become less arrogant. The problem with many people that have a sort of activist activism tendency too much or in, in an imbalanced way is that they believe that their ideas are right. They feel so inspired by the, for the sake of all and the sake of goodness and the sake of fairness and equality and preservation of nature and all that. And in essence, I agree with all these principles. And in essence, I yourself agrees with all these principles. However, we cannot always see why things happen the way they happen using just our physical minds. We need to be humble enough to understand that we, to investigate what our true desire is. Is it our desire to paste our ideas, our limiting scope of life onto everyone else and call that fairness and justice and equality and force the world to be that way? Is that truly being of service to others? Or is that in some way service to self by not allowing this arrogance to melt away? And this is the difficulty for those that have an imbalance towards love or service to others, which is really just imbalanced love. It's not as much love as it could be, was it to be balanced with wisdom. But the difficulty they have is to accept the fact that their ideas are not the right ideas per se for everyone. It's because it feels like it's so much about the other person finding balance for themselves and wanting to help out with that, that they can get sort of caught up in the illusion that this life and the physicality is more important than the non-physical lessons that are taken from this life. You have to understand that from the higher self's point of view, this physical life is just a game. It's not intimidating at all. It's like a dream. It really is like a dream. And so sometimes a consciousness will put itself through some physical challenges that seem to be based on injustice and oppression and all that. But sometimes or a lot of the times the consciousness 
the overarching consciousness is okay with this experience that's happening on only a small portion of its consciousness, namely the physical focus. Now from our physical focus limited view as helpers, we want to take away all the struggle and suffering in the world, but we don't realize that the suffering and the struggle in the world is chosen by those higher selves as well in order to extract learning and benefit and soul expansion. And so we actually detriment, we're actually by thinking we're helping by taking away all that physical suffering and challenge and catalyst, by feeling so righteous and good about ourselves for doing so, we're actually diminishing the growth of that soul. So think twice before you take away somebody else's catalyst, because it might be their greatest tool for waking up and learning and expanding at a soul level. So yes, yeah, sure, maybe you help somebody feel less physical pain, but in doing so, you might have actually postponed their expansion which one outweighs the other. From the overarching perspective, I can say from my own experience that the lessons are so much more valued. The expansion that's added to the soul through the use of physical catalyst is so much more appreciated than the physical discomfort that is experienced sometimes to get there. It is worth the struggle from that more wisdom oriented point of view. And we cannot become more balanced in love and light if we do not balance our love with wisdom in this way. I hope, that these, I hope that these examples suffice for now and are enough to help you get clearer on how this works in everyday life applications. And I want you to check in with yourself and see where you might be overly enthusiastic about being of service to others, not appreciating the timing of awakening and not appreciating the, the nature of catalyst. In general, however, I do recommend that we are available to service of service to be of service to others as much as we can with as much love and passion as we are able to. But do understand that the only real way to teach anyone is to give them clarity as to why they are continuously creating the pain they are creating. If you can show them first of all by example and then secondarily by offering this wisdom to them if they so ask for it or wish to receive it, but give them free will if they don't want to take it, it's not their time to take it. Be humble enough to not think you know better than their higher selves. And so all we can do is be of example as to how they can live differently, more consciously, more deliberately, and become more self-realized and self-actualized. If we embody that by example and we share that news with them, then instead of taking away their physical catalyst, we can instead offer new reflections on why that physical catalyst is there to begin with. And now we're actually offering empowerment instead of disempowerment and the postponement of their soul's journey. So stop postponing other beings' expansion and instead try to clarify why they are creating what they are creating and show by example how they can become more conscious, deliberate and create other things for themselves from a place of holistic clarity of their own soul theme and journey. This is the only true way to empower people to make changes for themselves because you cannot help somebody else if they do not have the clarity to sustain that. Again, give a man a fish and you'll feed him for one day, but you'll actually postpone him from finally asking him the, self, the question, is there not any way I can learn how to fish? Whereas if you simply offer him, I could teach you how to fish if you want to. If not, that's fine too. Maybe you have to struggle a few more times trying to get food and fish, and then you'll come back to me and ask for advice. That's fine too. Whatever you need for your journey. I see you're struggling not getting the food and the fish that you want every day. But I'm not going to give you this fish right now because that would be selfish on my part. That would not be love balanced with wisdom. It would be love blinded by obsession and my own limited, arrogant, righteous, self-righteous points of view. So I'm going to offer you how you can fish. I'm going to offer you lessons as to how to fish so that you can find those fish for yourself. Do you want this? Yes or no? If so, Excellent. And so you have empowered someone to for the rest of their life, you've given them the tools they need to wake up themselves and have a bigger, more clarity based perspective on how they are creating their own life and how they can utilize and interpret it in much more efficient and beneficial and pleasant ways. I hope this makes sense. Ponder it and apply this to your everyday life and check in with yourself and release any tension you might have as to like, oh, I need to be of service. I need to take away people's pain and understand that pain is part of the game of waking up and the souls that are all co-agreeing to have this experience expanding. 
so don't take that away but by all means educate clarify and be an expression be a radiator be an example of love and wisdom and light and empowerment by all means do that as much as you want but stay within your own joy stay within your own field of your um where your authority actually applies to don't go meddle with other people's realities thank you ponder this and i'll see you in the next lesson